Good day and welcome to Crystal Church. Listen, we are embarking on a brand new series called How to Recognize Him. The series we will discover how to understand the voice of God, how to understand our purpose in Him, and how to know that this is truly God and His purpose and plan for our lives. Listen, you don't want to miss not one episode in the series. So let's get ready to check out How to Recognize Him. Check this out. The sermon title this morning is simply... Crowd or influencer. The text I'm using this morning in the preaching will be in Matthew 21. I'll do 8, 9, and 11. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, the crowds answer, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. You'll see the emphasis on the crowd, a very large crowd. You'll see the emphasis on others, which means crowd. You'll see the emphasis on crowds again in verse 8. you see the emphasis again in verse 11. The crowd shouted. People follow Jesus in large crowds. People don't necessarily follow them today in the same way as it was in the time of Jesus. But we still have crowds and we still have followers. So what is the difference between friends and followers on Facebook? When you add someone as a friend, you automatically follow that person. And they automatically follow you. This means you may see each other's posts in one another's news feed. When you follow someone who you're not friends with, you'll see posts that they've shared publicly on your news feed. So who has the most followers on Facebook? Surely not you and surely not me. There's a guy by the name of Cristiano Ronaldo, 122.1 million likes. There's a person by the name of Shakira, 104.6 million likes. There's Vin Diesel, 116 million likes. There's Enman, 90.4 million likes. There's Leonardo Messi, 89 million likes. There's Rihanna, 81 million likes. There's Justin Bieber, 78.7 million likes. There's Will Smith, 75.4 million likes. And there's Carl Hendricks, only 20,000 likes. I'm better than most of you in this pews here today. I'm saying today, influence or influencers get paid just because they have so many followers. So who's the influencer? My daughter pursued this career in makeup and she is an influencer for some makeup company. I don't know what the name is because I don't use makeup except for television purposes. So they will give her free packs on stuff just to use it so that she may influence friends. I know some companies that run perfumes give their influencers bottles on bottles of per perfume so that they may spread the, the name of the brand. They are called influencers. Today, we don't see the same crowds as, as back in the day, but some of you will be shocked to know that there are large crowds in concerts still. You might think it's the Justin Beavers, but no, some of you might not know Rod Stewart. Rod Stewart in 1994 in Rio de Janeiro, 3.5 million crowd. Some of you might not know John Michael J. Ray, 2.5 million in Paris in 1990. And the only person you most probably might know is Beyonce, 1.7 million in Washington, D.C. in 2008. So is there still crowds following people? Yes, there are still crowds following people. Is it true that you get influences? Yes, there is influences. The question raised today, are you crowd or are you an influencer? There's a difference between the influencer and a crowd. Allow us to get back to the text. So watch the movement of the text in Matthew 21, 1 to 11 again. 
If you look at the movement of the text here this morning, you will see that Jesus left Jericho on his way to Jerusalem during the time of Passover. And during this time of Passover, it's exactly a celebratory time of what Jesus did as they exit Egypt. It's a time of memory. But this was the time when Jesus staged right from Mount Olive, the highest 27, more than 27 miles higher than any other mountain in Israel. He staged himself on Mount Olives because he's about to declare that he is the King of Kings and that he is the Lord of Lords. He is the great I am. He is the lily of the valley. He is the bright and morning star. He is the beginning and the end. He is the first and the last. His name is... Can I hear that name again? Jesus. He's about to establish that from Mount Olives. What he did, he sent two unknown disciples to a place called Beth Bethpage. You can pronounce it any which way because we know the Arabic and we, we pronounce nation will must come strongly from the English influence. But this morning, I just want you to know he sent two disciples to go and get two donkeys. At least one with a cult. And when they ask you, when, and he said, when they ask you, what, why do you untie these donkeys? Tell them, the Lord has use of them. You see, I could have preached about the donkey and how he teaches us to be accessible. You see, I could preach about the donkey that he was in need, the Lord was in need about the donkey. I could preach about a donkey. We need to be accessible to the Lord so that he can use us. I could preach about the donkey, how the prophet Zechariah prophesied back in the day that he will come on a donkey's back. I could preach about the donkey this morning. We need to be in the right place at the right time so that the two disciples might find you at the right place at the right time. He was tied up, but Jesus needed to lose him so that he could use him. I could preach about the donkey this morning. For some of you are tied up in sin. I could say Jesus will release you. Some of you are tied up with self-righteousness. I could say Jesus needs you. Some of you are tied up with arrogance. I could say Jesus needs you. Some of you are tied up with unrighteousness. I could say Jesus needs you. I could say some of you are tied up with lies and deceit. But I can also say, let that man loose and let him go. Some of you are tied up in character and in assassination. Whatever you are tied up this morning, lose that man, lose that woman and let them go. I could have preached about that this morning, but today we would look at the crowd. If you look at the text again, a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road. While others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted. The crowds answered, this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth and Galilee. I tell you, there were people that, that did not know Jesus. I could imagine some people started asking questions. Who is this on donkey back? Who is this? And that's the reason some say, don't you know him? This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. Another will say, I remember my father was telling me stories around the campfire. How Zechariah mentioned in Zechariah 9 verse 9, that behold, there is one to come on donkey's back. The, the conversation goes on. So Jesus made his great entrance on the, in a regal ride. So what is that? What's a regal ride? You see, this is not a, a typical king as you will see today. If you have to ask kings to come into a city today, they will place a king on a milky white horse. But back in the day for kingship, they place you on donkey back. When, when a king rides into the city, he will be on a donkey. Because the donkey is a, is a sign of humility and peace and divinity and royalty. You might not see it today because the donkey looks so cheap. When you travel from here to Namibia and you go through Botswana, you will see donkeys like you'll never seen ever in your life. 
The donkeys will, will lower your speed. That you can travel on a road that you can do 120 kilometers per hour. You will do 60 at a time on your way to Namibia. Ask me, I was there with a caravan. So I'm saying here in short, a donkey most probably don't look like the most admirable animal. Because a donkey is the sign of humility and peace. It was the choice of Jesus. You see, back in the day, Jehu was made king and he was ushered in on a donkey. And Solomon was made king and he was ushered in on a donkey. Because they understand when you bring a king into a city, you place a king on a donkey. And you know what they did that with Jehu and with Solomon? They also have branches and cloaks out there. So the Israelites know, they know very well that if somebody comes down the road, this is a new dawn, a new day. It's a new announcement that Jesus that you used to see before he's not the same Jesus as this on that donkey there's a declaration he is saying I am the king of kings I am the lord of lords I am the lily of the valley I am the bright the morning star I am the beginning and the end I am the first and the last there's a new declaration the king is coming hallelujah ah! Red carpet has been rolled out. I don't know how the song was, but they said, Hosanna! Hosanna! If I was there with my suit, my jacket would have been off. And then, Hosanna! Oh, some of you might not understand it. But you know, I'm an old fan back in the day from Memphis. I went there to, 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 to Elvis Presley's museum more than once. Not because that I have anything against Elvis and that he robbed uh, the, the, the music, the blues from, from the blues from the black communities. But he mixed the blues with some rock. I was there, I was there. Every time when I'm there, I go there. And I know the history, I know the backdrop. I also know that the, the, what made Elvis Presley uh, so famous was gospel music. I also know that when he sings music or makes songs, ah, you might not understand what I'm saying. You might see me flaky and lighthearted this morning. But you see, sometimes when I watch those movies or those videos, I see the woman take their clothes off. I will not go far further than that. You know what all else they take off. I'm not going there. But they are so excited for the king of rock. And this time around, it was not different. Because the king of kings, the lord of lords, the great I am, was making his grand uh, uh, ushering into Jerusalem. They take their clothes off. Do you know the feeling? If, you, if you're so happy that you don't know what to do, you walk around, you take your clothes off because you are so excited. I was just wondering here this morning, is there anyone in this place who loves Jesus so much that you will get so excited this morning that you will shout at me, His name is Jesus, the Son of the living God. There's nobody like Him. His name is Jesus. I say give me a drink. Give me a ear, give me a ass, give me a you, give me another ass. What does this spell? There's power in the name of, there's healing in the name of. Asana! I wonder, can you help me? Asana! I'll try one more time. Hosanna! You know what Hosanna means? You know what Hosanna means? It means safe and rescue and savior. So when you're in a predicament and your back is against the wall and you owe the bank and you don't have enough money to pay rent and they're about to take your car and the country seems as if it wants to burn. You don't have a choice. Because when you shout Hosanna, it means Savior, come through for me. Savior, save us. Savior, help me. Is there anyone with a need here in the house here this morning that wants to shout Hosanna? I can't hear you. Do you eye your back against the wall? I can't hear you. Do you need to pay rent? I can't hear you. Are you without a job? I can't hear you. Do you need an increase? I can't hear you. 
Is there anybody here who doesn't have food on the table? I can't hear you. Is there single parents who have to raise their children all by themselves? I can't hear you. Can somebody shout Hosanna? Matthew 20. You see, in Matthew 20, him and his disciples are just leaving Jericho. And then he, he very well known exactly what he was about to do. I'm about to be ushered into Jerusalem. This is the day. Do you know the feeling? Now, the other day, I'm a huge, for those who don't know, I'm a huge music lover. You might not see me, but I hear when something is off. You ask my wife, I understand music. I trust and I hope and I understand. I've got a lot of music, old school, new school, middle school, high school, and high school. I've got all the type of music. I listen to everything. I, I remember back in the day, I was very, very traditional around uh, rap music. Rap was just introduced when I was a young man. It was funny. Now, I don't think it's funny anymore. I think rappers are inter intellectuals. Their poetry is from art. These guys can rumble stuff in one sentence that you will sit down at the desk to write it in a week. The intelligent people. I listen to the, uh, the lyrics. Sometimes they swear, sometimes I make as if I don't know what they say. And sometimes I feel like I want to swear my congregation. And I say it's a rapper and not me. Some will catch it another day, but I'm just saying. So if you get back to the text, and there you see him, Jesus Christ, knowing exactly what he's about to do, leaving Jericho on his way to Jerusalem. And as he walked by, there was two blind men sitting next to the road. And they started shouting, Jesus, son of David. Have mercy on me. Oh, I don't know if you see the connection. The same crowd that was not there next to the road. Do know that there's some form of royalty attached to the divinity of David's tribe. It means him, I identify him in kingship with David. Remember David, I cannot go in there. David, the one that Saul has slain his thousands, but David is tens of thousands. He was a warrior. David was a strong man to such an extent that Jesus called him a man after my own heart. David. And everybody relates with this. So here's the two people shouting blind. Jesus! Son of David. I don't know. If you're blind and you want to see how you will shout. Some of you will shout because you have a degree. You shout like a degree. Jesus. Son of David. Jesus is not going to help you. Your degree is not going to help you. There's others that live in big houses. You shout like a double story. Oh, Jesus. Son of David. Have mercy on me. And Jesus is not going to help you. Son of you shout like your 7 series BMW or your, or your S class Mercedes Benz. Oh, Jesus. Son of David. Have mercy on me. You cannot shout like that. You must shout like somebody in a squatter camp that doesn't have food on their table. You must shout like somebody that needs something on their table. You must say, Jesus, 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 son of David. Look, I'm blind. I am blind. Jesus. Look at this. The disciples walked up and said, shut up. You're making a noise. Go read the text in Matthew 20. You're making a noise. Shut up. You're making a noise. This is not how we behave around Jesus. Shut up. I hope there's people in this place. They have such a lot of problems. If your neighbor wants you to shut up, you shout louder. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. My children is on drugs. Help me, Jesus. My husband is about to divorce me. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Take away where, where it seems to be now. Help me, Jesus. Come through for me, Jesus. Is there anybody in the house here that wants to shout, Jesus, have mercy on me. Son of David, 
have mercy on me. I am shouting, have mercy on me, Jesus. Have mercy on my situation. Have mercy on my health. Have mercy on my children. Have mercy on my finances. Have mercy on my career. Have mercy in my business. Have mercy. I have that job. My finances will come together. You know what the devil wants you to say in season and out of season every single time? Is to make a ne negative confession and live by it. In due season, in due time, the Lord will help me. I believe that's for everybody. Turn to your neighbor, say neighbor. Try against your own neighbor. Say God will help us. God will come through for us. He's the head and not the tail. He's above and not beneath. His name is Jesus. He's the son of the living God. Can I get your crowds to shout? Jesus! Son of David! Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. And then, he said, be healed. They receive eyesight. Right there. I like Jesus. He just walk and they follow him. Man. Try this, try this. Open a new Facebook page and just put your face there and see if the followers will come. You need to create stuff for followers to follow. Now there's more crowd. So now that you're back in the text, we can start now. Him coming in. Some people in church, they disturb you most of the time. You can't listen to the sermon because they talk too much. Or they play on their phones. You want to hear because you've got serious stuff on with God. You are not there where they are. Maybe they're good for where they are. But you are not in a good space. You want Jesus to give you some answers. And I can imagine things in the crowd. Now I'm dream taking you to the crowd. And I, I, I'm, I'm focusing on the crowd now. And there's, and there's somebody in a crowd now that was at the wedding. He said, I recognize him from a wedding in Canaan. He said, he said, when the, when the wine ran out and, and in the wedding at Cana, Mary, his mother, turned to, to him and she said, do something about this. Do something about the wine. He said, and he said, woman, my time has not yet come. And the person is like, for a moment, zone out of the situation. The person is now at the wedding. I remember him. I recognized him from the wedding. You know what he did? He turned water into wine. And then you know what his mother was saying? His mother was saying to us, do whatever he tells you to do. I am saying here to declare. You might get all, all the answers. It seems like you are running out of cash. It seems like things are not working in your life. It seems like your back is against the wall. But I want to join the wedding. The wine is up. But I want to join Mary. Just do what he asks you to do. I'm saying here this morning, if Jesus asks you to pray, just pray. If Jesus asks you to believe, just believe. If Jesus asks you to shout, just shout. If Jesus asks you to walk around the walls of Jericho, just start to walk. Don't worry about what people will say. People are sophisticated. They are complex people. But you need a breakthrough. Is there anyone here that needs a breakthrough in their life? Do whatever he tells you to do. Are you ready to use to do whatever? Oh, I'm back in the crowd. There's another person. 
standing on the other side. I see him got a red lumber jacket on. He said, I recognized him. You know from where? From a funeral of the widow's son in nine. He said, I was there at the funeral. This woman lost the only son. That was the breadwinner. There was nobody else. I remember him. I recognized him. He, I was there at that funeral. We were weeping. And then you know what he said? He looked at the woman. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion for her. And he said to her, do not weep. I'm here to declare that Jesus walk, he will walk in your situation. All that you have to do on this Palm Sunday, recognize him for who he is. His name is Jesus. His name is his name is his name is I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. You see, when you weep and there's nobody around, the bank is not there, your ex are not there, your children are out on the streets, and you don't know what to do. You are weeping, but I am telling you there's a declaration: weeping may last for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Somehow God will come through for you. I declare prophetically, I speak life over you. I speak life over your children. I speak life over your marriage. I speak life over your career. I speak life over this church. Joy! Shout joy! Don't just shout, look like joy. Say joy! Look, the funeral is still on. The coffin is still there. He touched it. He looked at the woman. He said, good not. I like the crowd. They're talking. They're talking. They're talking. There's another person in the crowd. And you know, I, I didn't ask Julie to bring that little cloth when we, we had a little briefing this morning. But give me that jacket. I don't know which jacket it is. Just bring me that jacket. Just bring it. Bring me that jacket. It's my wife's jacket. Yeah. It's at least a lady jacket. I'm not going to put it on, but. I recognized him. We had a conversation at the well. He asked me for what? I said, you don't even have something to dish the water or scoop it. And he said, and he looked at her and he said, he said, if you knew the gift of God and who it is, and ask you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living waters. I see the woman at the well. She's still standing there. She said, from that day, I'm still drinking. I'm saying, is there anyone in this house we started to drink on day of salvation like Ricardo in the tithe talk. When you drink of this water, you don't need shake, shake. Some will catch it another time. When you drink of this water, you will thirst no more. Hey. Somebody shout Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. I, I, I see two men a little nervous in the crowd because they were not with the people for too long. They, they don't know how to behave amongst the masses. And, and they were standing there and, and Adam was say, do you also recognize him? They say, yes. We recognize him from the tombs because we were demon possessed. He said, there are times that we used to cut ourselves. We were so demonic that they would chain us. And within the time of Israel, there was no chains strong enough to bind us. We'll just break it and attack people at the graveyard. Who wants to go to the graveyard and there's two madmen attacking you? I can just see that auntie always fall at the graveside. How oh, she's running because the madman. I can just see how they do the song. Uh, amen. Sing grace, and they see there the madman come. How oh, sweet! Uh, let that coffin go. Let the coffin go. Close, close, close. Uh, the madman, the madman, they're coming. They're out 
of control. But you know what? Jesus stopped them. And Jesus command the demons out. The Bible called them legions. More than a thousand demons in this man. And he sent them into the pigs. I'm going to show you something. saw the man who had past tense been possessed by the legion of demons. Certainly dressed and in the right mind. <laughs> See, I, I'm not nervous because I'm, 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 I'm nervous because I'm not used to crowds, but I'm in my right mind. You see, some of you, it's fair when God delivers you from whatever, that when you see, I remember, I remember when back in the apartment, I remember Jesse Xavier was still small. I remember Evangelique was small. I remember who remember the blue bears that used to cut your electricity? And a white man with a shorty gets out. Who remember those days? And I, they will remove, they will remove something. And I will put something back. Because my baby needs bottle and what water. Yeah, 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 I was a young pastor. Don't look at me like that. But we need to drink hot bodies. I don't care, and it's also it's an apartheid. I don't mind. We can take the, the electricity. What I want to say, why that illustration? It's 2019. When I see the electric bill, everything is paid up. But I still shake. <laughs> don't blame these two men at the graves. When they still shake, the truth is, they has been delivered. Sometimes you'll get nervous about certain things in your life. But don't you worry. Even there, the Lord will heal. Sometimes you're going through hardship and pain. Sometimes I don't know about you. Sometimes I, do, I know I don't have hair. But I feel sometimes I want to pull my hair out of my head. It feels sometimes I'm not demon possessed but demon oppressed. I feel sometimes I don't know what to do with my life. It seems like there's no, there's no daybreak coming. It seems like there's no light at the end of the tunnel. It seems like all hell will comes at one shot at you. If the keys are burst, the gutter burst, if the gutters can burst. The garage doors don't work at the same time the engine sees. It seems like all hell broke loose when things go tough and hard. But I've got news for you. It seems like stuff are demonic for you and your business and your health with your children and career but I've got news for you somebody's on his way to the graveside and it doesn't matter who's there at the graveside there's power and authority with him he's got power to drive out any form of illness sickness and disease any form of pain hardness all that I'm saying here this morning you don't give up you don't give up on your career you don't give up on your wife you don't give up on your children you don't give up on your business you don't give up on whatever you touch and do because in some way somehow I don't know how God will do because those two mad men did not pray that morning for God to come to the graveside but that morning he was not on his way to the graveside he was just passing by I've got news for you you must probably are in this service here this morning there's no answers for you it seems like you don't know what to do but I've got news for you here this morning it was not your business that God help you in your finances it was not your business that God will help you with your children but he's rocking up on donkey's back Hosanna 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 Save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. Shout Hosanna. 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 He'll make a way where it seems to be not. His name is Jesus. He was there with Shadrach, with Meshach, and Abednego. He was there with Moses, cutting through the Red Sea. He was there with Nehemiah, rebuilding the walls. He was there with Paul. He was there with Peter, walking on the waters. 
He's the same God of yesterday, the same God of today, the same God of tomorrow. He knew know the future. God will make a way where it seems to be not. God will come through when you expect it the least. I speak life over everybody in this building. It will go well with you. It will go well with your family. It will go well with your career. It will go well with your children. Whatever you touch and do, I believe that it will go well. It will go well. It will go well. It will go well. Yes. The pulse are driving you mad. The situations are driving you mad. The sickness are driving you mad. But the time is here for you to be your full senses. And you will even say, why could I not see you earlier? Why could I not see this earlier? Because there was demon oppression. Don't blame that woman that's crying and shouting. If I'm here, I say, oh, Zen. Because the crowd is expecting breakfast. I'm you, I shout as He can do it for you. As save my situation. As in, there's a move in the house this morning. The Spirit of the Lord is gonna cut through demon forces. Witchcraft. People said negative things against you. The time has come for God to reverse it. Go back where you come from. In the name of Jesus. Put that marriage together. Put that family together. Put that children together. Make a way where it seems to be none. Jesus, come through for everybody in this place. Jesus, make a way where it seems to be none. Jesus, hear our cry. I'm going to count those three. And you're going to shout us there. I count one. I count two, I count three. Can you shout us there? Oh, 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 that is not enough. Is there somebody here that wants to run the aisles for a while? Is there somebody that wants to run the aisles for a while? Because Jesus did somebody, something in your life. Oh, oh you did not expect for him to come through, but he did it in any case. You didn't pray for him, but he did it in any case. His name is the Son of the Living God. Oh, I see another woman with an issue of blood. I see her pressing through. So I'm struggling this thing for 12 years. I don't know what to do anymore. But they were telling me, and I could see the crowds coming. They were telling him the healer is in the crowds. They say his name is Jesus. I was pressing through the crowd. People were tramping on me, but I didn't care. Because I have a need. I need to be healed from this inflicted body. You have a need. You are too long in that financial difficulties. You have to press through the crowd. Your children are too long on drugs. You have to press through the crowd. You are too long with that sickness. Oh yeah, oh yeah, the devil were running a mock in your business for way too long. You are pressing through the crowd. And this woman from nowhere, she managed to touch the hem of his garment. She touched him to such an extent that he was busy walking and he paused. And he looked around and he said, who touched me? The disciple said, sir, how can you ask who touched you? Look at all the people around you. He said, somebody touched me with a difference here. The, the original word say, somebody made a demand on my ability. Who made a demand on my ability? Is there anyone in this place who wants to make a demand on the ability of Jesus? Make a demand on his ability of this morning. Jesus! Hosanna! Hosanna! Son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David, shut up. You're making a noise. Son of David, have mercy. I know 
shows up because he understands the struggles we are facing. Jesus shows up because he came. Demons tremble when he shows up. Sickness go when he shows up. Blind eyes open when he shows up. making an unfair demand because you are Jesus. I need a miracle. I need a miracle. I need a miracle. I need a miracle. Somebody was standing there. I said, I don't know Jesus. I hear you talk about him. I know nothing about him. My question is, can he do the same thing for me as well? Well, I recognized him. My name is Patricia Bora. When I laid on that hospital bed in Barra, sick with a fibroid as big as 38 centimeters, that covered my heart, that covered my stomach and almost my heart. He healed me. He was there. Jesus healed me. Pat Bora recognized him. Do you recognize him? I was a part of the crowd, and when Jesus walked by, I recognized him because I was in a state of brokenness. I am, or I was, a rape victim. I was held captive by drugs. I was suicidal to a point where I tried to kill myself over 10 times. But I recognized that he is my savior and he has set me free. I am no longer in bondage because of who he is. Do you recognize him today? Mr. Hall, do you recognize him? I recognized him. My name is Alan Hall. I was uh, diagnosed with cancer twice. I'm healed now. <laughs> and then I got Bell palsy, which is like a stroke. And then they discovered I got a, a tumor in my brain, which I still have today. And I had a knee replacement. I walked with crutches, but I no longer walk with crutches. <laughs> he delivered me. Thank you. Just before we go to the last person, I just need some oil quickly. Just rush, 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 rush. Don't just throw it. Give me that baby bottle just like that. 
the tumor that's still on your brain. Stretch your hands. 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 Father, let it shrink and disappear in the name of Jesus. Put your hand in front of your nose because this will disturb you. Yes, I anoint you. The name of the Father, I anoint you. The name of the Son, and I anoint you. The name of the Holy Spirit. Heal him, Lord. Heal the tumor. Shrink it, God. Shrink it, God. Hang on this. Your eyes might burn for a while, but hang on this tower. Do you recognize him as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, as the Great I Am, as the Lily of the Valley, as the Bright Morning Star? What is it? What is his name? Shout it, name! Do you recognize him? Uh, my name is Asher. I've been manufacturing drugs and using drugs all my life since a little boy. And I had a, uh, a few lolly lounges where I used to sell drugs to small girls and they used to come and hang out there. And then one day when I recognized Jesus, I was sitting there behind in the church. I was high. I was using drugs in the church. I was here since 4 p.m. I wanted to see my daughters in church. So I was here, drugs, whole night during the service. I was still high using drugs out of my pocket. And then I recognized Jesus. It's nine years now. And, I'm, and then I recognized Jesus. It was a morning like this morning. And I said something from the podium. Remember what I said. What did I say? Uh, Rev said that you never know who is standing next to you that is high, that is drunk, that is on drugs. And then in that sermon, he said, your life is going to change and just trust God. And, and indeed, 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 Jesus did it. Can I get a J in this house? Can I get an E in this house? Can I get an S in this house? Can I get a U in another S? Spell that name. What is your position in the crowd? Are you with a cheering crowd? Are you with a scary crowd? Are you part of the Sunday or the Friday crowd? Are you a fan or are you a follower? Can you shout Hosanna on a Sunday and crucify it on a Friday? Are you a fan or a follower? Are you a twice a month church grower? Are you in that crowd? Are you with a gossiping crowd? Are you with a volunteering crowd? Or are you with a crowd of critique? Are you with a tithing crowd or a penny pinching crowd? Are you a crowd or are you an influencer? I beg of you this morning to be an influencer in the house this morning. Share your testimony. Let the people know that Jesus is a king. He's a great I am. His name is. Do you see him for who he is? I say he's called El Olohi, God mighty and strong. He's called Elohim, God the creator. He's called El Shaddai, God almighty. He's called Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. Is he a provider? Confess it, say it, he will provide. In the deepest of my needs, he will come through for you. Is it Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals? Can you call him this morning, Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner. Jehovah Makadesh, the Lord who sanctifies and makes me holy. Do you see him for who he is? Is he Shalom, the Lord of peace? Do you see him for who he is? Is he Yahweh Tzikenu, the Lord our God? Is he Yahweh Rui, the Lord our shepherd? Do you see him for who he is? Yahweh Shammah, the Lord is there. In my situation, he's there. With my family, he's there. In my business, he's there. In my career, he's there. In my health, he's there. In my house, he's there. Can you see him as Elohim, the Most High, El Roy? God is seeing Elohim, everlasting God. And El Gibor, mighty God. Do you see him? For he is. Can I get a shout again on that name? What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? I pray this morning that we will see him on this palm Sunday. What's that?
his name is Jesus. Find someone. You know, I close with this. I watch a, a, a video clip of somebody that that took the church over from Jeremiah right in Chicago. And I watch it. I watch at least two to three sermons a day because it's my business. I create, I divine, I design sermons. I love rhetoric. Homiletics is my forte. I'm influenced, influence of course, as you know, my friend Thomas in a, way, in a big way. So I love the subject. So when I'm done with my final doctorate, I will be a homiletician. Or I will be what you call a practitioner, for the lack of a better word. But I watched, I watched this guy last night. He preached a sermon. I said, God. He talked about the cognitive mind and the empirical state and the auditive state. He said that if you recognize using my word now, but he didn't use the word recognize. But if you recognize him, he said, you think of him with your cognitive side. And then the empirical, my research that I'm doing now is the empirical research, which means you track evidence. Then, when you, when you gain evidence like what they did this morning, they, they step over to the auditical, or, auditical side. And then he defined when you think of Jesus. You step out in the next phase. When you think, you think first. Then you thank him. And after you thank him, you praise him. And he said, he said, it was preached in a sense where people say blacks are way too emotional. And it was on that point where he was preaching about that when you think of before 1992. 94, Nelson Mandela, when you think, you remember that you could not go into Wimpy. You remember that you had to buy through a small hole. You remember that on my way to Cape Town to go and study for my first time, I had to be in third class because you couldn't use first class. You remember. And when you remember, Then you praise. I understand why some of you are so complex because you never think of what he did. And you never remember. And you never thank. He said the process repeats. Can I bring it home? Can I bring it home? Some of you, we, we see you in your smart cars. But there was a day that you were in a taxi line. So. Some of you, you see yourself in lovely houses living in Houghton and Santon. But there was a day on your wedding day that you had to go into your mama's two-room bedroom. And some of you were living in the backyard, in the Makuku, in the Zozo. But look at you today. So when you think, when you think, yes, when the car would think about there was no money after my think. There was no money for a master. He doesn't have a choice. But also to take his clothes off and throw it in front of the king of kings. He doesn't have a choice to shout, Hosanna! Because when you think of the goodness of Jesus and what he has done for you, your very soul cries out, 
I say hallelujah. Is there anyone with a witness here in the house? I say Hosanna. Is there anyone with a witness here in the house? His name is. Trust that you enjoyed today's sermon. If you are in the nearby Johannesburg area, please join us at 7 Walton Street, Johannesburg. God bless you and thank you.